Pontia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. David Snyder, there's David, there he is, who will... Uh... David is a, an experienced uh, personal trainer and will speak on uh, mature health and fitness. Talk about old people, right? Just a euphemism. <laughs> David is from uh, Melbourne, uh, Melbourne uh, Australia, where he owned a uh, body challenge health and fitness center and now spends his time uh, playing golf and uh, competes in uh, Thailand and Singapore. He graduated from Melbourne uh, University in 71, majored in psychology and uh, physiology. Uh, he immediately went uh, into his own uh, personal training business in uh, Melbourne. And uh, he, he uh, started the business in uh, Melbourne and, uh, at the uh, famous uh, Fitzpatrick's Gym in Brunswick. He was one of the first three qualified personal trainers in uh, Victoria. David played uh, professional basketball from uh, 68 to 86. He coached in Australia and uh, Israel. He owned the uh, Body Challenge Health and Fitness uh, Center from 92 to 95, which had 1,200 uh, members. His uh, personal training uh, clients include uh, Danny Mitford, uh, who is uh, Mr. Australia. Uh, he taught uh, AFL umpires preseason programs and uh, Cambridge Hospital Patients Rehab uh, Program as well. So please, David, it's all yours. Thank you. Good morning, young people. Anyone under 50, please go and have another hash brown or a piece of bacon. Uh, we're not interested. I think we can get rid of this one now. Well, we can't. Okay, mature health and fitness. Um, I think it's it's definitely topical in the fact that many many people uh, of our age group want to get fit, have the motivation to get fit, but don't really know how to start to do so. And the old adage of no pain, no gain, is absolutely false. There is plenty of gain without having to hurt yourself, and hopefully I can show you some of that today. Okay. In the introduction, the scientific research correlating exercise to longevity of life. There are many people that will tell you that uh, if you exercise, you live longer and so on. It's a falsehood. There is no direct correlation between long life and exercise. And it seems like I'm already telling you something that why do you come up here and show us this if there's no benefit? Well, there is a benefit because there is a direct correlation between exercise and joint pain. Now, I know in this audience some of us think uh, I have sore knee, sore back, sore whatever, but there is a direct correlation between doing gentle exercise and reducing things like joint pain, tendon pain, or muscle pain. So why do we get these aches and pains as we get older? There are a number of areas. We can talk about muscle fatigue. Now, as we get older, we don't produce the same amount of protein in the muscles because we're not doing the same amount of work. And uh, there are muscles that we don't tend to use as we get older that we may have when we're younger. So I'm talking about, and I will show you later on a chart, certain muscle groups, major and minor muscle groups, that we tend not to use that are actually support muscles for the joints, for the tendons, and uh, certainly for your bones. 
and more so posture. And I look around and how many people really sit with their bot ha ha, someone's just moved. He's put his bottom back in, the, back in the seat and he's sitting more upright. Posture is very important. The slouching of the shoulders and so on creates extra tension across the top of your neck, across the base of your back. And high impact activity. We think we must exercise. And some people I've noticed of our age are running on treadmills because they were told that you've got to exercise or they're running on a, on a concrete path. It's not necessary. These high impact exercises at a certain age are of no benefit. They are aerobically good for you, but physiologically, as far as bones structure, tendon structure, joint structure, they are no good. So please, high impact is, is just not, is not necessary for someone 60 years and over. If you want to become more uh, in tune with your body, if you want to have a little more fitness, if you want to have uh, a little less pain in your joints, and you have a problem, a diagnosed problem, you are not, you should not, you should not consider doing any exercise without a medical clearance. This is most important. I cannot stress this enough. Even if you are slightly overweight, slightly underweight, haven't exercised for some time, please, please get a medical clearance first. Have a checkup. In, in Thailand particularly, a full medical checkup is not expensive and it is definitely worthwhile. So please do that. Okay, so this is what we look at from the rear view. And you will notice in the body there are some very, very heavy major muscle groups and very, very heavy minor muscle groups. So the wear and tear on our bodies. As we get older, we will see that in the neck, in the neck, we have the levator scapulae, lifting weights, dropping weights, picking things up uh, incorrectly, causes a lot of tension. Around underneath, where we have the rotator car, uh, sorry, where we have the latissimus dorsi, again, a major muscle group that we tend to, bending over incorrectly, we can hurt. There are, mu there are exercises at our age that very, very easily we can build up without heavy weights the latissimus dorsi, which actually supports the top part of our spine. And how many people have back aches in the, in the high shoulders, behind the shoulders? Many. So the waist, around your waist, around your hips. Many people have had hip replacements, uh, me included, uh, and because we haven't done the correct exercise or done the incorrect exercise, this has created a problem. We can exercise to resolve that. And knees, many people have knee problems, but we have a complex situation, a complex setup of knees where we have tendon and muscle groups working together. If they don't work together, that's when we have things like knee replacements. That's where we have situations where uh, we have to have minor surgery to uh, repair a tendon. Many, many people have had uh, small arthroscopic uh, situations where they've just had to get cartilage cleaned out. But that cartilage shouldn't have been torn in the first place. And as we get older, and as we get a little heavier, and as we get a little slower, that cartilage becomes a greater and greater problem. And in our ankles, 
very, very simple exercises just to keep the flexibility in the ankles. We don't have to strengthen ankles, but we have to keep the flexibility in the ankles so that when we're walking down the street or when we're walking across a park or when we're just walking around in the house, there it is so simple to keep flexibility in those ankles. So the areas where it's most beneficial to work here is you can see your major uh, muscle group being your trapezius and, and, and uh, deltoids and pectoralis majors at the top there. That is a very, very big supportive structure in our bodies to help support the top part of the spine. And you can see, if you look very clearly, you can see that at the base of the spine, we have very little muscle support structure. So that is why we get lower back pain. So where we've got to support that, as well as at the top, is we've got to work your bottoms, right? We've got to work our gluteus maximus. Our gluteus maximus is, a, is as far as, as well as being on the top of your legs, is a support structure for the core of your body. So we've got to work through that too. And we've got to support our legs. Now, to support our knee problems, and as well as our lower back problems, we have our hamstrings, which are the muscles at the top of your legs, and your calves. It's not hard, it is really not hard to, to do simple exercises to improve these areas and to give support to the lower part of your back. So <clears throat> we also, sorry, I did miss out the trapezius at the top for your, for your neck. The trapezius muscle is a very, very strong muscle and it is so simple. We'll be showing some exercises. I've got some very fit people coming up here today to sh Why are you laughing, Ren? <laughs> We're oh, that's right. Andrew's coming up. Thank you. Um, we've, we've, got <coughs> we've got to learn to support our, our skeletal structure by supporting and developing our muscle structure. So, okay, what roles do these situations play? Alcohol. I refuse to accept the fact that I can't have a drink. <laughs> At a time. I refuse to accept the fact that um, alcohol, as it is, is bad for you, that you, should, that you have to stop drinking. You don't have to drink. But in moderation, alcohol is quite harmless. In moderation, there is some medical research, although not conclusive, that red wine is actually beneficial for uh, heart disease and blood flow. Not conclusive. Could have been uh, developed by a few scientists who loved to drink. However, however, there is no harm, absolutely no harm in having a alcohol. However, having said that, excessive alcohol, it has been proven, can create brain shrinkage can create liver damage, can create stomach distress. So, please, have a drink, but don't go overboard. You don't have to. Being drunk used to be, used to be um, very popular when we were young. Let the young people get drunk. We're going to drink responsibly. Smoking is, is pretty obvious, and I can't I can't uh, defend anybody who smokes. I am sorry. Uh, and apart from the obvious being cancers, 
it is very, very hard for any personal trainer to coach somebody in aerobic or anaerobic activity if they smoke. Their lung capacity is diminished, diminished dramatically. Their throat, sorry, their throat and concentration is diminished dramatically. So I'm not going to defend those smokers. It's staying up there. Lack of activity. Now, we're going to, again, we're going to show some basic exercises today. But there's activity means we get up off our dot. We don't sit in front of the television all the time. We do not sit in front of our computer all the time. We do not lay on the couch all the time. Um, activity means we get up, we walk. We walk with very, very, very good shoes. We don't go to the specials where we get, can get a copy of an Adidas or a copy of a Puma or whatever. We go and get a very, very good shoe. And I might suggest, because all the companies produce it now, I might suggest for people of our age group that you consider only a shoe that is a gel shoe. You know what I mean by a gel shoe? Yes, so um, it should contain a gel, and your shoe should be changed every six months. The gel does solidify, so please do that. Um, lack of activity also at our age diminishes our aerobic capacity. You think that just by sitting there you're not going to do any damage to your lung or VO2 abilities or your lung capacity, but it does. It does. We are not producing the protein cells. We are not dividing the protein cells like we did when we were in our 20s and 30s. Now, sitting for long periods of time, and I know that at certain points I'm guilty of this as well, sitting for long, points, uh, long periods of time does reduce the flexibility of hip and knees. And it's very, very difficult in some situations to eradicate that situation, to eradicate that problem, because some of us have a mobility problem at the moment. However, however having said that, again, a qualified medico, a medical professional, can assist in that area, and we should, we should uh, consider seeing a medical practitioner in that situation. Okay. Before we exercise, any exercise, doesn't matter how light the exercise, we must stretch. And stretching is very, very, very simple. So we, the, we stretch our legs, our lower back, our, our upper back, chest, arms. Every exercise is, is uh, preempted with a stretch. And we're going to do some stretches. We're going to... Uh, do some stretches and exercises today with some volunteers. And uh, many, many years ago, um, I, think, I don't think I can even remember how many years ago, uh, I played basketball. And a gentleman in this room was also a basketballer and looks far more like a basketballer than I do because he stands head and shoulders above me. George, would you like to come and help me uh, do some stretching and some leg work. Absolutely. Now, who looks like the basketballer now? Okay. So, before we're going to do any exercises, George and I are going to put simple this is what we can do at home. We are going to put our heels on a bench 
and we're going to bring our chest down towards our heel as as far as we feel the hamstring stretch right you do not have to hurt yourself so we're stretching our hamstring we're now going to change do it the other leg and stretch the other hamstring okay as far as we can go without hurting ourselves good so we still have our Achilles tendon and our calves to stretch so now we're going to place our hands here push our legs behind and get our heel to the ground again as low as we can without hurting ourselves so we hold that we step up and we change You can feel the stretch. You feel the stretch, John? It didn't hurt. Don't say that. It did not hurt. Now, George is going to lie face down on the bench. And he is going to curl this leg up and down. The other leg up and down simple we can all do that and what are we doing we're giving flexibility to our knee and we're working our hamstring there is no weight but it's quite simple now he's being clever okay George can we turn around and sit up okay now we're going to work the top of our quads later on George will be able to do this with a weight but in the interim from the sitting position he's going to bring his leg up to horizontal keeping this part of his leg still and down leg up to horizontal come on George and down again come on George give it some work good very good so now George is going to stand up and we're going to work the adductor the adductor is through the center here and it's very important so we're going to open our legs to 45 degrees correct you're at about 30 get to 45 your feet open and we're going to squat just squat just till you feel it in the adductor and come up as you become more okay and you become more flexible like George you'll be able to go down and come up you can feel it in the adductor after the exercise once more that's it thank you George thanks for the help Come on, man. Come on. The big man's coming up. Yes, Ren. Yeah, Ren. Actually, I know Brian Maxey always has an opinion on volunteers. He might want to get up. Where are you, Brian? <laughs> Okay, Ren, not knowingly, has volunteered to show us how to do a little bit of lower back the gluteus maximus exercises. So, Ren is going to lie down, face forward, and he's going to come up He's going to come up just to his elbows, almost like a push-up, but just to your elbow, and hold. Doesn't look hard, does it? It doesn't look hard, does it? Down again, and bring it up again. It is 
looks very simple. We can all do it any time, and it is most beneficial. One more time. Okay. So, Ren is now going to sit up, and you're feeling fine. We, now you're into the weight. So, if you could just hold this for me. When we lift a weight, it is imperative always you bend your knee, always you bend your knees and lift properly. You take the weight off your quadricep, these big muscles here, and then we're going to open our back. So we lift to here and just open your back. Back, bend your knee. Your turn. Oh, hang on, I'll put on the extra weights. No, back down again. Bend your knee, come up nice and slow, and pull your back. Correct. Back up, bend your knee down. That's it. Again. Back, forward, down. Perfect. No, it's not it. We're, we're doing our, our back now, our gluteus maximus. So we want to do one more exercise. You can, you can choose your weight. You, any weight you like. Hey. Over here. One foot. And drop and up. Bend your knees, you drop. That's it. So we're working the left leg now, the gluteus maximus, and we're just dropping and coming up. Now the other leg. Excellent. Correct. Thank you. Okay. You're not going anywhere. You can put those down. You have a choice of wep you have a choice of weapon. Okay. So very impressive. So we are now going to still very impressive. Okay, we're going to add some flexibility and work the middle back. So we're going to turn to center. Turn to center. Turn to center. So. Arms, arms along, that's correct. Turn to center. Turn Center. Do you feel that in the middle back? Excellent. Thank you. Now we're going to go. Thanks, Marin. Thanks. Now we're going to go back to our dumbbells. Oh yeah, you're not. You're, you're a back man. You're a back man. Choose the dumbbell that you want. Excellent. I can take the light ones. We're going to do what's known as a fly. And a standing fly is we bend our legs a little bit, we hold the weight in front, and we keep our elbows level or above our hands. So it's a simple exercise like this. And you will feel that in the top and middle part of your back. Sir. So.
right. Keep the elbows up. That's nice. The man's almost a personal trainer. Beautiful. And one more. And, and going from there, Ren's going to drop the weight by his side. And he's going to drop one weight to his knee whilst, whilst lifting the other. Whilst lifting the other. That's correct. Yes. Keep your back straight. Get a little more bend if you can in, in, your, in your body. So you're moving... You shouldn't go for the big weights, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sren. That's thank you. Thanks, Ren. Come, my man. Andrew. I want to thank Andrew. Um, as well as demonstrating today, Andrew came from Sierra Sports and supplied us all this equipment. Um, a good friend uh, uh, and a very good tennis coach. But um, it was very nice of Sierra to come in and, and help us do the demonstration today. So now we're up to the pectoralis major. We all know which, ex which muscle group that is. We're coming across here to work our chest. Helps us aerobically and anaerobically. And, sorry, before I do that, let's do it. Um, I, I apologize, our upper back, um, which is very important for the uh, rhomboid, the large muscle group that we, show, we looked at before. You remember that one? So you can choose your weights. He's a middleman. <laughs> okay, so Andrew will sit down and do a simple shoulder press. So he's going to bring the weights up to his, up, holding up here, right, and just push it up so that the weights come together and come back down again to the shoulder. Up together and down to the shoulder again. Simple exercise, you do not need heavy weights. One more. <laughs> so you do not need heavy weights, but you are getting good exercise through the top. Now, we're going to hold those weights, stand up, and, and this doesn't look like a hard exercise. But, but just by standing here, we're just going to do a shoulder crunch. Just lift our shoulders. As simple as that. It's an exercise. And it's, and it's a very good exercise. We can all do it, but we don't think of it. It's a very good exercise. Okay. That's it. Yes, gentlemen, get your partners to ask you a question and you just... That's right. It's a good exercise. And one more. One more, sir. You're going to lie down. And it's simple. It's very simple. He brings that down to his chest and pushes straight up to the chest and straight up. Now, when he brings it to his chest, he should be breathing in. When he pushes it away, he should be expelling air. <laughs> so, one more. Thank you. That's it. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Okay, there is one more set of exercises 
that I really want to discuss and it's not about how heavy you lift the weight but it's how cleverly you lift the weight and I know that uh, Ren did say to me uh, previously he's happy to do arms so Ren you're back up again now biceps and triceps are an ego lift for men the bigger your arms the more manly you are wrong wrong the stronger your arm is 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 more important and pick up your way two when we do a bicep curl a lot of people go for heavy weight and they're pulling it up and moving their back ouch I can hurt my back you can either do it seated if it's a slightly heavier weight so that your back doesn't move or with a lighter weight and a higher repetitions you get a very good effect so what Ren is going to do he's going to do a bicep curl and he's going to start with a weight hanging by his side and as he lifts that weight he's going to open it to the top and then close it on the way down open it to the top and close it to the way down what does this do as against that we're using the whole bicep rather than partial you feel that okay another exercise and can, I think you'll need a lighter weight to use the bicep take take the light weights I don't need any injuries so with these weights he's going to start from the top and he's going to open his arm and bring it up open his arm and bring it up you feeling that okay quite simple okay so by opening the arm you do actually doing bicep and tricep uh, you do two but yeah at, at once yeah okay so simple two simple bicep curls very very good for you thanks Ren now you can do your triceps so tricep he's going to sit on the edge of this bench we'll bring a bench across here no hands on the you don't need weights and, we, and we're going to do simple drops putting your feet out a little bit more that's it you hear drop push up no that's fine push up simple try that's alienating the tricep perfect thank you Ren so also where are we? so Ren whilst he's sitting there is going to put both behind his back both weights behind his back and he's going to push up the weight comes back to the shoulder and he's going to push up right again alienating the tricep thank you thanks big man Done. thank you so what other exercises without equipment can we do well there's one that you can do that has takes no impact but is very good aerobically and if you have an indoor bike as against an outdoor bike it is boring as hell 
but it is very, very good for you. Now, nowadays you can have your phone with the music going or whatever, and to get on a bike and to just gently ride that bike for 20 minutes and then walk it out for another 20 minutes is a superb exercise at our age. Superb exercise. And let me say, as you progress with the bike, there is a, an exercise called spinning. So as you progress, you will then um, ride your bike for two minutes, warm up, and then you will sprint like hell for 15 seconds. And then you'll cool down and you'll ride for two minutes again. Then you'll sprint like hell for 15 seconds. And then you will build that up to your two-minute warm-up, one-minute sprint. Then you'll build that up to your two-minute warm-up and two-minute sprint. Aerobically and anaerobically, it is a very, very beneficial exercise. Pool walking. Many of us have pools where we live. So those that do have pools, beautiful weather conditions we have here, why don't we walk in the pool with the water up to our waist for 20 or 30 minutes? Impact taken out as from walking on the street. Very, very good aerobically. Very good for lower back. Very good for legs. And pool swimming, for those of you who are swimmers, gentle swimming. You, you don't have to race it. Uh, there are no Thorpes in the room. There are no superb swimmers that have to beat a time, but a distance is, is far more important. So I would, like to, I would like to think that there is some exercise that we've shown today that can benefit everybody. To achieve mature health and fitness, one does not have to aim for pain for gain. You really don't. You have to feel a stretch. You have to feel an exercise. But it means a little time, a few, day, a few days per week. We don't have to exercise every day. We don't. If we exercise three times a week or four times a week, it is a lot of gain. So sensible exercise, those that have a condition, get a medical check. Always remember you stretch before every exercise and hopefully there's some benefit today for people to change your lifestyle or add to your lifestyle. Thank you. Do we, do we have questions? Uh, I was just wondering if you'd say a few words about your later day career as a golfer because I think this is very interesting. I'm a very poor golfer. I have been fortunate to uh, have won one uh, tournament on the Seniors Tour and I have um, played in tournaments the Singapore Open and the Thai Amateur Open. Any questions? Yes, sir. I was, uh, I noticed with the bench press that you handed your assistant the barbell and if you're alone in the gym, that's not an option. Can you show us correct form to get the barbell down onto your absolutely self and then back down onto the floor without absolutely without good, killing yourself good question okay well firstly you shouldn't be lifting weights that you can't con control it but i will show you correct technique Stick my bottom out. Okay. I bring 
okay? So I've brought it up here. I do my exercise, and the reverse after is exactly the same. Back to my quadricep. So I'm not, getting, I'm not going to sit up with a weight to put stress on my back. Thank you. Um, you didn't mention anything about nerves and like sciatic nerve, it, particularly sciatic nerve. Can you have any comments on sciatic nerve pain, avoidance, and uh, um, getting better? Okay. With sciatic nerve, as far as uh, the physiological side of it, it is very, very difficult to find exercise that alleviates the pain or alleviates the symptom. There is a combination of medication and certain exercise. Having said that, sciatica, depending on where it is, has to be controlled very, very carefully. Where you saw me using the sticks, um, the loosening of certain joints with the sticks and perhaps at another forum or perhaps after this forum I can show you if, it, if it's relevant to yourself I can show you some of the exercises that are currently used in conjunction with medication. Yeah, one is an elliptical machine just as good as uh, riding a bike uh, any comments on that, uh, riding bike and birds. And also, uh, I see many of my friends and myself when we're driving a car and we're trying to turn around our nick, our nick is a little stiff going from side to side. Any comments on that as we age? Okay. Um, yes, the elliptical machines can be good, again, depending on any pre existing conditions. The, the um, advantage with a bike is that you're working less body parts. Basically, you're just doing back support, your glutes and your quads. But if you are capable of using the elliptical machine, absolutely, a, a very good exercise. With regards to the turning of the neck, you saw with the bar when we were going from side to side to side. That is actually loosening up the rhomboid and the trapezius. That would be beneficial. You don't need to use weights to do that. You've already got a, a tension you've got, or, or a problem, perhaps muscle scarring or whatever, or tendon scarring. Loosen it up. You've got to loosen it up, not exercise it. Uh, I suppose that's a good laugh, but what is the uh, therapeutic benefit of the uh, oil massage that's on offer here in Thailand? Psychological. Yes, sir. Uh, bicycle has a lot of um, advantage, but uh, if I have a problem with my back and with the neck, uh, should I avoid bicycling or what, what should I do? Well, firstly, you'd have to uh, advise me of what the problem is. If it's a simple stiffness, then what I suggest you would do would be lower the seat. So take that bend, that high situation away. If you have, if you um, leaning forward on the bike and you're feeling it through the neck and the, and the, in the back, then I would suggest you get off the bike altogether. Have you got a swimming pool? Walk the pool. Walk the pool. Open your hands when you're walking in the pool, right? So you walk the hands you'll find that you'll be loosening and increasing the strength in your back and in your shoulders, um, but get off the bike. Uh, yes, uh, does BMI come into play or what would be the optimum BMI? Oh, at, at our age, your, such an index measurement is of little or no benefit. 
you know, whether we're, whether we're carrying 34% or 45% or whatever, it's, it's a fat content. And um, really what we would need at our age is flexibility and uh, muscle and tendon support. Um, if you want to, if you're very keen on BMI, then you've got to basically get a weight down um, very, very low. So instead, instead of our complete beer barrels, we've got to get back to a six pack. Yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you very much for the presentation. Very interesting. I watched your exercises, which you did, and half or more of them I've been doing for the past 40 years. I'm 81 years of age, and I feel great. So it's absolutely wonderful what you did and showed, and I keep on doing it because I think it makes me feel great. Thank you. The Thank you very much. Uh, my, question, my question is about the uh, recovery period. It seems the consensus is the older we get, the longer it takes to recover from vigorous exercise. So, for example, hypothetical case, let's say a 65-year-old man does an hour of these upper body weights. Uh, is two days enough to recover, or uh, do we... Uh, I've read somewhere that uh, some people say up to three or four days before repeating the exercise. I c yeah, a good question. Well. First thing is, I think I emphasized at the start, vigorous or heavy exercise is not essential at our age. Um, I have trained uh, people for many, many years, and I have found it very little benefit after a 40-minute steady exercise of there being any further benefit by going to an hour or an hour and a half or whatever. The gym junkies that stand there, it's a social aspect as much as an exercise aspect. So if you exercise correctly for 40 minutes, uh, three or four times a week, um, you will find that your recovery at our age on exercises that are not over vigorous, your recovery will be, you'll be fine by the next day. Yeah, very interesting talk. You've actually shown me where I was going wrong with one or two exercises, certainly the shoulders. Um, I have a back injury which I need to support. Um, but I work out roughly uh, 20 minutes every morning uh, with uh, bottles of water because uh, I haven't got any weights. And I find the exercises that you showed me today well, the correct way to do it. And I haven't been doing it correctly. <laughs> well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, let me say, um, it's, it's innovative of you to use bottles of water. Two litre ones. Two, oh, two litre. Oh, so he's, he's a heavy lifter. Um, but might I just suggest, because you're opening your hand and doing the exercise, it's not expensive to get a couple of dumbbells, say two and a half and fives, and use those because you're closing your hand and it's a little bit safer. Thank you. Um, I have a friend who I've tried to persuade not to use a treadmill because I think treadmills should be illegal. So I just wanted to get your opinion on treadmills. Ren, you already know my opinion on treadmills. I had treadmills in my gym because they were demanded. And let me just ask you, when you go for a walk along the street, is the footpath moving or is it still? The footpath is still. So there's a certain amount of impact as you hit that footpath. But when you're on a treadmill, a treadmill is moving one way and your foot is moving the other way, the impact is greater. The incidence of, even in young people, of having shin splints or knee problems from treadmills is quite high. And yes, uh, I am not a fan of treadmills, I must say, but in certain circumstances with certain athletes, they are essential. I, 
looking around the room and a Apart from George, no, I think I think we can all forego the treadmill. Yes, sir. I was interested in your recommendation about gel shoes. Yes. Um, in the Patea area, do you know of any good shoe stores where they sell these? And can you describe? Um, are these? fairly supportive shoes or are they sneakers or what, what, what are you really no, talking about? No, they are about? supportive sports shoes. You do not need a running shoe. You need a proper supportive shoe. There's, there's a big difference in uh, weight and, and in, a, in a support. Um, look, I can't recommend a particular shoe store. Uh, uh, I have been to, is it Central Festival? I shouldn't be advertising, where you have a choice of a number of brands. Um, and um, I will tell you that I particularly train in Brooks or Essex, but I'm not going to give you any brands to look for. I uh, wondered about your feelings on protein supplements. You know, the standard recommendation is to get a gram a protein per kilogram of body weight, but I've read that as people get older and they're in a catabolic state and their bodies are breaking down, that they should actually get more than the standard recommendation. For, so, say for a guy like me, instead of taking 70 grams, maybe I should take 90 or 100 if I'm working out pretty vigorously like every other day. What would you think about that? Honestly, um, if you are training for a particular sport at a high level, Protein and whey supplements are most important. Absolutely. Because you are using a lot of your protein, carbohydrate, uh, during vigorous exercise. At our age, we are very, very capable of getting everything we need in natural foods. People that go for these supplements are trying to achieve something that is really uh, superfluous to, to their needs. Um, yes, if you can go and get your organic vegetables or vegetables without MSG, if you can get your fresh fish, if you can get your fresh chicken, um, it's what you need. You really don't need to be sucked in to this advertising of needing extra protein, extra whey protein or whatever, unless you are training specific. Yes, sir. I have a surgically induced uh, spine problem, which the surgeon must have slipped a little bit, and that hit my, um, you were talking about a sciatic nerve, which has caused me to have foot drop on my right foot. Uh, I can get around moderately, but while I was exercising in the U.S., the uh, people always used a recumbent bicycle because of my back. And I, I think the guy talking about bicycles, you're thinking about the normal bicycle seat. But in a recumbent bicycle, you're basically sitting on a bench. And it supports your, you can push your back back and uh, bring the pedals to you. I thought, I think that's a great idea. A recumbent bike is uh, a very, very good idea under certain circumstances. Um, the gentleman that I spoke to pr previously with the sciatic uh, who stated that he was having pains and there was another gentleman here that was talking about sciatica. It depends severity. Even a recumbent bike can create uh, an inflammation if not done properly, if not uh, uh, programmed with a proper qualified physiologist. A recumbent bike is good. It's very supportive of lower and, and middle back. Um, and it does add flexibility to the legs, the knees and the ankles, obviously. I would recommend very much so, sir, if you have the situations that you have, if you go, do want to use a recumbent bike, please do so under a qualified physiologist. Please. 
There's a sorbethane material. Uh, I had a full insert a few years ago. Um, what's your view on those, the sorbethane? Are you talking about insert in your running shoes? Yeah, it's a sorbethane material. I think it's came from the States. Yes. Uh, sorbethane's been around a long time. Um, George, the basketballer, and I would know that we had it in our, in our basketball shoes way back in the 1950s. And uh, um, yes, it is a shock absorbent material, but you'll find that a lot of the good quality shoes these days have it as a built-in. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of the slogan, 10,000 steps a day keep the doctor away? It depends whether you're walking towards the doctor or away from him. <laughs> it's a fallacy. That it for questions? Yeah, just one more for me. <laughs> um, I've always wondered what sort of protein is good for our general age as far as uh, muscle uh, toning. Can you sort of enlighten me and probably others what sort of general food you should be aiming for? Okay, I think um, when you're talking about diet together with exercise, that's a whole new topic and not, no, it's not a whole new presentation, don't you look at me. Um, but let me say, um, at our age, we should be cutting down on red meat. Yes, and, and as high protein as it is, it, al it also is a long digestive process required to break down the meat. There, are, there is fresh fish. I don't know if you're a vegetable man, but things like spinach and silver beet is very, very good. There are some very high protein uh, uh, vegetables and uh, seafoods that I would recommend. Have your meat once or twice a week, but no more. Um, but really, um, as far as protein's concerned at our age, because we're less active, you don't need a protein supplement. You need to eat the right foods. Fresh fish, very good. Fresh chicken, very good. Green chlorophyll uh, vegetables, very good. Uh, if, if you don't know about it, um, the Cathalon in front of the City Hall, the, the Tesco on Sukhavet has a good range of stuff to start, right? And they have shoes and weights. And where is your store and what, what do you have there that they don't have? Uh, our shop is on uh, Sukhavet and Chayaprug. Oh, stand up. And uh, we stock things like uh, home fitness equipment, dumbbells, benches, bikes, treadmills, uh, things like that. Uh, Decathlon, to be honest, have a good range. Uh, I, I go there sometimes. Uh, shoes, uh, especially, very, very good. Uh, light weights, things like that. We just have, obviously, a higher quality range of equipment. That's all. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we stock those home gyms, things like that. We do, indeed. I might say, um, in support of Andrew, uh, if we're going to buy weights or machines, whether they be rowers or three-stage or four-stage machines or whatever, we must be very careful because ergonomically, some of them can be very dangerous. And you want to get equipment that's not going to be a worry for you for injury. Um, please, whether it be Andrew or whether it be somebody else, go to somebody that uh, have very, very high quality equipment. Andrew certainly does. I recommend. Are there any more questions? Uh-huh. Do you have any views on testosterone supplements? Yes. No. Sorry. 
there's this program called the seven minute exerciser if you're familiar with that uh, do you have a comment on it on the seven minute exercise I'm not familiar with it I'm sorry I'm sorry any more questions for this very interesting subject yes no right no more questions but thank you for this presentation thank you very much thank you david very uh, very informative i'd like to uh present you with uh, this uh, certificate of appreciation for today's uh, talk very good Thank you. <laughs>